Welcome to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson, along with head football coach Terry Sims. And we are in uncharted territory. The Cats uh, lose a 16-10 overtime game at Savannah State University, the first time that Savannah State has beaten Bethune-Cookman since 1992. 16 games uh, in a row the Cats had won previously. Coach, we go into Savannah State uh, and they play well. We did not and you, you tipped your hats. You said we didn't play well enough to win, and we find ourselves 0-3 right now. No question. Savannah State, uh, they're a much improved football team. They played a great football game on Saturday, and we did not play well enough. Not taking anything away from them, we just did not play Wildcat football on Saturday night. Coach, and I know on the way back, uh, uh, you had a lot of time to, to think, and, and on the day off, on uh, well, actually, it was practice yesterday, and the day, uh, Monday, the day off, uh, how, how, do you, how do you get a team uh, in your five years here, you haven't, you haven't been in this position, uh, and as a head coach, you, you haven't been in this position, but as an assistant, long-term assistant at various places, you've been in programs that have been like this. How do you get them out of this, this cycle? Well, I think, first of all, as coaches, we can't panic. Mm -hmm. We can't allow the players to see us panicking, and we're not going to panic. We're going to continue our day-to-day -day duties and, and operate our program like we have and hold everybody accountable. And first and foremost is me. I have to hold myself accountable. I have to make sure that everything is working right. And I told our coaches yesterday, we have to take responsibility for this. We're not going to put it on the players. It's, it's not just the players involved in this. It's the coaches also. And ultimately, again, I'll say it's me. I have to evaluate myself and move forward. Coach, you know, um, this is a football game that we went in. Uh, all the preparation seemed up to par. Everything was working. Uh, we stopped Savannah State. They get a first, two first downs in the opening drive. We stop them. We begin to move the football. Uh, penalty here and there. We stop. But then on the third series, uh, without Larry Brim already, Anthony Cruz goes down with a, what, a fractured wrist. Right, yeah, he, he's uh, done for the season, and it's sad to see that because Cruz was coming into his own in our offense, and, and not having Larry available for that game, you know, it left us with uh, one quarterback, with, with uh, Akivas Williams, and now Tavares Copeland, who is our backup quarterback right now. Those guys are, are here to uh, hopefully try and lead us against uh, North Carolina Central. Well, Coach, you saw, uh, you saw early uh, with a long drive, uh, Kivas, after he gets in the game in the second quarter, he begins to get a little rhythm. Uh, they blitz him. They blitz him like crazy. We get the ball inside the red zone, and uh, he's tackled. I think he loses his helmet. He has to come off for a play. Uh, I know it was two helmets lost on that play. And inserts Copeland with the uh, sort of like a Wildcat pack. Right, and, and that's where he was uh, in our offense on, on Saturday. He, has, he had not taken a lot of reps, so we wanted to run something safe with him just to give Akivas a chance to get his helmet back on and get back on the field. And I think they, they both will be good for us here in the near future. It takes reps. It takes time. And right now we're still talking about Akivas Williams didn't take one snap last year. Correct. And he's played a total of probably – uh, 15 plays up until Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So I I'm not going to be down on him. I'm not going to put anything all on his shoulders. He he's making progress, and, and, and I think he'll be a lot better uh, in Saturday on Saturday's game because of, of last Saturday. No question. You could see him growing up. They were throwing everything that they could possibly throw at him, Coach, uh, in the game. And, uh, and you, you know, this is how you get experience. Uh, even you, and I'm sure, sure even, even the, the thousands of Wildcat fans who traveled to Savannah, everybody felt that, okay, all right, all right, we're, 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 we're trying to get our footing, we're trying to get our footing, we'll pull this thing out in the end. And it just didn't happen. Right, and, and you know, not to offer any excuses, and we talked about this earlier, you know, not having headsets our whole first half, right. and they're going in and out, you know, the second half, that's something you gotta work through. And they chose to keep their headsets on, and that's just a gentleman's agreement. Either you do it or you don't. They chose to keep theirs on. We have to work through it as a staff, and when we did, we just had a, a few shortcomings. Okay, so now for the rest of the year, Coach, we're in conference play, coming into town, the defending uh, co-champions along with us and ANT, uh, the North Carolina Central Eagles, looking for some revenge. But we're just simply looking to gain our footing because this is indeed a very good football team here at BCU. And, and you just have faced some, some circumstances that, that the average fan is not aware of. Uh, have you seen this many injuries this early in the season at crucial positions? No, I mean, you know, we, we lose Larry against Tennessee State. Uh, we lost Cruz. 
We, we played uh, the whole first half with, without uh, Jaquan Loomis. Mm -hmm. Michael Boland didn't play at all. Demarcus Womack, Mike Jones hadn't played this year. So we have a number of our key guys that, that were injured on, uh, on, on Saturday and did not play. But again, we have to coach the guys that are there and get them ready to play. And, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Well, I'll tell you who came alive. Tupac. He did. He did. Tupac's going to be a great back uh, in this offense. He, he was nursing a knee from, from the spring, and they finally fully cleared him on, on, on uh, last Saturday, actually. And he, he, he played well for us this Saturday. Well, we'll come back in just a few moments. We'll talk more about Tupac, and we'll talk about the defensive effort. The Cats lose 16-10 to 10 in overtime in Savannah, Georgia. In the Mideastern Athletic Conference, we believe the game of life shouldn't be a game of chance. That's why we're taught to work as hard in the classroom as we do on the field. Because you're not just playing for the trophy, you're playing for the ultimate prize, your future. The Mideastern Athletic Conference, 13 member institutions, 16 championships, one goal, educating student athletes for the game of life. At BCU, every game is a life lesson. A chance to show faith. This faith. And sportsmanship. It's bigger than winning or losing. There's life beyond the game. Opportunities beyond the classroom. Responsibilities to our community. On a much larger stage. As ambassadors to the world. Leaders. Champions. We are Wildcats. And we believe in faith, integrity, and love. Enter to learn, depart to serve. That's the Bethune Cookman way. Go Wildcats! Do you want to wear what the real Wildcats wear? You can get your official BCU Wildcat team gear from the comfort of your own home online at bcusportshop.com. The official online store of BCU Wildcat Athletics. Save your gas money. Avoid the hassles in the mall. Click on bcusportshop.com and get the best in Wildcat wear delivered to you in just 48 hours. bcusportshop.com, the official Wildcat online store. The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? Welcome back to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson. Terry Sims, our head coach, sits in with us. The Cats are 0-3, first time since 2009. 0-1 in conference play, coach. Uh, but we are not out of this thing by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and, and as you mentioned in the, in the first segment, uh, we are not going to make any excuses. Savannah State is a much improved football team, came ready to play. And, uh, and you knew that uh, we were going to have to play. We came in there focused. Uh, but this injury bug and, and so many other things that disrupt the flow of the game uh, were, were happening to us. And now we've got to just turn that attention and, and to, to this week. But defensively, Coach, we, uh, you know, we, we played a pretty, when you look at the stats, we played a pretty solid football game. Uh, they took advantage of, of uh, some, you know, empty sets a couple of times. Uh, but, but more importantly, I think they had momentum. Uh, they had certainly uh, great crowd support, uh, and so did we. Uh, but, but in games like this, you, you just try to hold on and, and, uh, and just get out of there with the W, and we couldn't do it. Right. Uh, they, they had, uh, once we went back and watched the film, offensively they had three explosive plays. Mm -hmm. One of them being the, the last play they scored in overtime to win. They had a screen and a jet sweep. Mm -hmm. Those were the three explosive plays they had, but they were the plays that counted. And, and we did keep them under control for most of the night, but at the end, we just didn't hold on. Mm -hmm. and, and I think penalties had a lot to do with that. Having 13 penalties for 117 yards is, is unacceptable, and one, we can't win like one that. One penalty in particular late, late in the fourth quarter, Coach, uh, we've got them, and we, we're getting ready to get the ball back. Uh, I think it's third and eight from their own three-yard line. Uh, we forced an incomplete pass. There's a holding call, and then there's a 15-yard unnecessary roughness call on us after the play ends that gives them an automatic first down. 
Right, and that young man, he heard about it. And, and I don't think we'll be seeing that from him anymore because those are things that, that, that aid in you losing football games because you, you, you don't get off the field when you need to, and we really need to get off the field at that point in time. How, how important, and Coach, I've been in the meetings. I've seen um, when, when, you know, when, when you talk about the importance of, of penalties, you said that, look, okay, you, you, there's about six penalties that you say, okay, these are gimmies for a game. Uh, but we had you know, 12 penalties of over 100 yards. Uh, how does that happen? I know on offensive holding calls, those are judgment calls. If, you, if a referee wants to call, he can call it any time. But other things like offsides. I, I think it's a lack of focus. You know, and I tell our guys it's lack of focus, it's a lack of discipline, and we don't tolerate lack of discipline around here. And we have to make sure we're focused at all times. What do you do as a coach now? Um, uh, now that you're back, you've had your meetings, you've had a day of practice, uh, and how easy or difficult is it to sense that something's off kilter here, and, and how do you fix it? Well, you know, I, I think we, we fixed it with the 16-10 loss. I think that helped fix a lot of it, and we just have to keep driving home our points of, of things that, that we emphasize every day, and that's discipline, that's detail, that's focus, and make sure that our players adhere to that. Mm -hmm. what, about, what about the personality of Terry Sims? Uh, defensively, you're a defensive coach. Uh, you could see rallying around. There was one game-changing hit that was made. Uh, and that was the Trenton Bridges hit on a big third down situation where Savannah was driving to win the football game. And what a hit on a blitz. Uh, and I know you've called for many of those types of plays and we just haven't seen enough of them this year. Right, and, and, and we will. We'll, we'll start seeing a lot more of them. You know, we, we've just been a little shorthanded on the D-line. We have depth, but we have a lot of injuries at D-line. Yeah. And now we're getting some guys back and, and you'll start seeing a lot more of our defensive packages starting this weekend. Okay, now uh, with a minute and a half to go uh, in, this, in this segment, as a head coach, uh, you become the CEO of the program. I've watched you and, uh, and I'm quite sure that, that as, as you built up your career, you said this is how I will run certain situations. And you have really given autonomy to certain coaches because that's what they get paid to do. Uh, when do you step in? I have already. <laughs> and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm a guy that likes to allow coaches to coach because that's the way I was right. as an assistant. But in times like these, I have to put my hand back in everything okay. and make sure that we're operating the, the correct way and, and, and at the correct pace in all three phases of the game. Okay, coach, uh, we'll come back in just a few moments. We'll talk about the special teams. You continue to get great plays now out of your special teams. That's a tremendous investment that you made last year uh, with the hiring of Ashawn Larkins. Uh, two special teams plays that potentially caused six points in the game Saturday. One was a muffed hold uh, on a chip shot field goal, and the other one was a shanked punt deep in our own territory. Uh, they, they get a field goal out of that, and, and some folks say that could have been the difference in the football game, uh, but we also had tremendous punt coverage, uh, pressure on their punter, and, uh, and the kickoff return teams as well, as, as, as well. We'll come back in just a few moments. We'll focus on that, and then we'll turn our attention to North Carolina Central. At BCU, every game is a life lesson. A chance to show faith. This faith. And sportsmanship. It's bigger than winning or losing. There's life beyond the game. Opportunities beyond the classroom. Responsibilities to our community. On a much larger stage. As ambassadors to the world. Leaders. Champions. We are Wildcats. And we believe in faith, integrity, and love. Enter to learn, depart to serve. That's the Bethune Cooking Way. Go Wildcats! The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? In the Mideastern Athletic Conference, we believe the game of life shouldn't be a game of chance. That's why we're taught to work as hard in the classroom as we do on the field. Because you're not just playing for the trophy, you're playing for the ultimate prize, your future. The Mideastern Athletic Conference, 
13 member institutions, 16 championships, one goal, educating student athletes for the game of life. The Wildcats lose 16 to 10 in Savannah. A 16 game win streak over the Savannah State Tigers ends. The Cats are 0-1 in conference play. Uh, as we discussed this with Terry Sims, our head football coach here on the Football Insider. Coach, you know, uh, we talked about offense, defense already, but special teams, uh, that investment is beginning to pay off for you. And you, you said you, you knew that it would. And Ashawn Lockett, the schemes that we use, uh, they were not going to let Frank Brown uh, try to break a punt. They talked about that. Uh, but but uh, we, we protected well and we put pressure on them. Right. And, and, and you know, we had a, a few of our fans upset last year. That, that our special teams were not performing, but it, it takes time. And I think the, the special teams package that we put in, Coach Larkins is doing a great job with, with getting those guys to believe in what's going on. And we made a little bit of a change, and we have a lot of our starters that are on special teams now because it, it is a, a third phase of the game, and we need players on that, that, that side of the ball to make sure that, that we're doing what we need to do to be successful, and that's not putting second and third string players in there. Mm -hmm. Two minutes ago in the game, Coach, you make a decision uh, to, to attempt, I think, a 49, 50-yard field goal. Hernandez comes up just short. It was on target, uh, probably four or five yards outside of his range, uh, but he had a good shot at it. And I know we had a penalty on that drive that pushed us back five yards. Uh, but uh, you felt confident that the defense would hold him if right. we missed it. Yeah, I, I, I have I – have nothing but confidence in our defense. I, I, I'm with those guys every day at practice. I know how hard they work and I have faith in them. And I felt like, you know, Hernandez had an opportunity to make the kick because he's making them every day mm -hmm. in practice. His leg is stronger. And, and I went to him and asked him if he thought he could make the kick. And of course he said, yeah. And I said, let's try it. You know, because I knew we had a defense that would go out yeah. and hold. Him. Yeah. Good. I got, got, got a lot of leg in it. Needed a little win, uh, but coach, it, that didn't hurt us in the end as well. Now, um, as we close the book on Savannah State, we got to open a new chapter, and that's uh, a team that uh, that is contending for the championship, just like we are, and that's the North Carolina Central Eagles. We have been a thorn in their side for the last several years, and uh, they go in and open up a conference uh, road win against Norfolk State, 34-31. Tell us about this ball club and what they're going to come in here with, trying to do fast, physical football team that, that, that's well-organized, they're well-coached, and, and those guys play hard. They, they play hard. I, I've already watched the, the, the film on them, and every game that they played this year, they're, they're, they're not in a couple of those games, but they're, they were against FBS opponents, mm -hmm. but they didn't stop playing. But they played hard. They, they played a D2 team, and they beat them as they should. And last week against, against Norfolk, it was a great football game. It was a great MEAC football game. They went on the road. They, they played a, a tough physical brand of football, which they do on defense. And they, they threw the ball around. And with, with their quarterback right now, Malcolm Bell is a great athlete. He runs their offense. And he does a, a lot of good things. And I think he's grown over the years. Mm -hmm. And Coach, you know, we don't know. We're, we're assuming we'll have Larry back. If not, Archivist has to grow up more, doesn't he? Well, he does. And, mm -hmm. and I think he's up for the challenge. You know, he, he's, he's a guy that wants to play. He wants to do well. He wants to lead his football team. And if Larry's not back, we're going to have to rely, rely on him to do that. You know, Jerry Mack, uh, the, the coach at North Carolina Central, uh, his first head coaching job as well. And, uh, and he views this as the next logical step to supremacy in the MEAC is to overcome the Wildcats. <laughs> he called me and told me that on Sunday. But uh, Jerry, Jerry's doing a great job, and, and he tells me that all the time, you know, we just need to get past you guys because they've figured the formula out that we haven't, and that's beating A&T. They, they've, they've figured that out, and he said the next step is to beat us. Wow. And so your next step is to stop that from happening, <laughs> right? My next step is to win a football game. Right, and right. that's what we got to come together and do a as a program. Coach, the Wildcat faithful were there in mass numbers, weren't they? I mean, it looked, it, uh, the, the stadium was sold out. Coach, we had at least uh, three, 20, uh, close to 3,000 fans there. And, and the band was there, and it just, it, it looked tremendous. Well, uh, first of all, I want to go, I want to thank the fans and the band for coming and apologize for not showing better for them. 
because they, they're faithful, they come out, they support us, and we just did not put on a good show on Saturday, and we're going to work our butts off to make sure that doesn't happen again. You heard it from the head football coach, and that game is going to be this coming Saturday, 4 p.m. Uh, it's going to be our Think Pink game, uh, Church Community Day, the Cats against the Eagles. The Cats are seeking their first win of the year, and to even their MEAC record at 1-1 one one on the season. We'll come back in just a few moments, and we'll give you more information about this upcoming football game, how you can get tickets, and if you don't have plans to come, how you can watch the live screen or follow us on all of our social media platforms. In the Mideastern Athletic Conference, we believe the game of life shouldn't be a game of chance. That's why we're taught to work as hard in the classroom as we do on the field. Because you're not just playing for the trophy, you're playing for the ultimate prize, your future. The Mideastern Athletic Conference, 13 member institutions, 16 championships, one goal, educating student athletes for the game of life. At BCU, every game is a life lesson. A chance to show faith. This faith. And sportsmanship. It's bigger than winning or losing. There's life beyond the game. Opportunities beyond the classroom. Responsibilities to our community. On a much larger stage. As ambassadors to the world. Leaders. Champions. We are Wildcats. And we believe in faith, integrity, and love. Enter to learn, the power to serve. That's the Living Cooking Way. Go Wildcats! Do you want to wear what the real Wildcats wear? You can get your official BCU Wildcat team gear from the comfort of your own home online at bcusportshop.com. The official online store of BCU Wildcat Athletics. Save your gas money. Avoid the hassles in the mall. Click on bcusportshop.com and get the best in Wildcat wear delivered to you in just 48 hours. bcusportshop.com, the official Wildcat online store. The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? Welcome back to the BCU Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson along with Terry Sims, our head coach. The Cats are in uncharted territory, 0-3 and 0-1 in conference play uh, after losing 16-10 in overtime to Savannah State. And our attention now shifts to North Carolina Central. But coach, uh, the Wildcat faithful continues to be there in support. We had, you know, I can't say enough about our cheerleaders. Uh, they were there, I, I watched them uh, during the latter part of the game. They're, they're constantly in motion. They're, they're inspiring the kids, uh, talking to the fans like cheerleaders really do. And, uh, and I want to just tip my hat to them. I know you made a comment about them earlier as well. Yeah, uh, and those are my little road warriors. They, they, they go and they fight with us every weekend. And I appreciate what they do. I appreciate their support. And, and I hope they continue. Now, you had fans from all of Georgia, Florida, South Carolina there, and I mean, they were there. And uh, I talked to a lot of them after the game, and I said, now we need you home too, you know, because this is a huge football game here, and that uh, th this is a team that you, you gotta beat if you wanna contend. Right, we, we, we have to come out and play well on, on Saturday and have a good showing if we wanna contend for the title because Central's gonna be there. They're going to be one of the teams in this conference that, that'll be at the top when, when we finish the season. And we have to make sure that we're successful on Saturday so we can continue our fight. Let's go around the league right now, Coach. Uh, FAMU loses 48-14 to South Carolina State. Um, Savannah State, much inspired football team, goes to Tallahassee uh, to try to make it two in a row with FAMU this week. Uh, Howard Morgan. Uh, tough football game. Who wins it in the end? I think Morgan comes out then. Don't then in the end, yeah. uh, Morgan wins it. Uh, A&T was off, and, uh, and and now South Carolina State takes this week off. Uh, you know, and Delaware State goes out of conference and this gets blasted by Missouri. Uh, but now everybody's attention is inside the MEAC. Right. What will it take, Coach, to win it all? It will take first and foremost 
undying support, and it will take our football team having ultimate focus on the job at hand. Mm -hmm. We've got injuries that are uh, re rehabbing, uh, but it's always the next man up. And, and I know uh, Archivis Williams grew up. You can see him growing up. He's probably not going to face as much pressure for the rest of his career as he faced in his very first game. Right. And, and that's the nature of college football. Yeah. You know, when you have injuries, you have to play the next guy. You got to get the guy, next guy ready. It's no waiver wire. You can't go out and, and, and sign another player and bring him in. You have to play what you have. And that just comes down to recruiting. And if you've recruited well, which I think we have, well, you, you should have players that, that are backing up and ready to go. He just has to take more snaps, which he'll get a lot of them again this week, and focus on the little things in our offense. And we're going to do that with him all week. And he should be ready to play on Saturday. Now, when you look in terms of his ability to lead the football team, uh, uh, there's no question that you believe in his ability. He is a leader. Uh, so is Larry. Both of them different styles of leadership, but leaders nonetheless. Uh, you are also looking and trying to find that right combination in the backfield. And you seem to have found some power running in Jamarcus Thompson, Tompkins and also uh, Tupac Ishmi. Yeah, both of those guys, that they're going to be our power runners right now. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, Cameron Rigby who will give us something, and, and Marcus Levy. Yeah, Marcus came in a, a couple plays in the game, and I know we were just waiting to see him explode. Right, and, and, and Levy came in, and, and he, he, he had a, a small injury early, but he's back now, and, and the fans should, should see a lot more of him on Saturday. Coach, how important is the tight end position for you? Uh, and I know, I know that uh, Daquan Loomis, the all-conference selection, uh, has been nicked up early. He, he had to play this week in the second half. But uh, how important is he, is he to the program and to the, to the offensive strategy? You can't put a price on his importance. And it was, it was bad for us on Saturday because we were out both of our, our, our starting tight ends. Uh, Jaquan Loomis and Michael Bolin both were, were injured. Loomis was able to come back in the second half and, and did a lot of good things for us. So hopefully we'll have both of those guys on this Saturday to uh, help provide some of those services that we were missing from our tight ends. Okay, well, the Cats hope to have a full deck of cards to play because they're going to need all of those jokers. You get that? And uh, that was a good one, wasn't it? Get that for this game this coming Saturday. North Carolina Central comes to town. 4 p.m. kickoff, Church Community Day. It's going to be a Think Pink celebration. We're going to have a crowd out there. We expect to see you there in support of your Wildcats. We want the real Wildcat fans to continue to follow us and show up and inspire this young football team to do better, and I guarantee you they will. We're just about out of time. If you can't catch the game, make sure you log on uh, to bcuathletics.com and catch us on our social media platform. For Terry Sims, for the Wildcats and the rest of the Wildcat Nation, We'll see you Saturday at the stadium.